Hi, welcome to Home Tech Adventure, where we give you tips and ideas to help you manage and use computers and related equipment in your home. I try to give the best tutorials and information so that you can be more confident with the technology that you use. Today we're going to talk about USB names. You might have come here looking for USB 3.1 Gen 1 versus USB 3.1 Gen 2, and we are going to cover that, but there is more to the story, so stay tuned. Before we get into the names, let's start by just looking at some of the connectors, because I'm going to be referring to those as I go through the names. The Type-A connector is probably the one you have seen the most. Type-A connectors are rectangular, and generally, if it's a blue color, it's a USB 3.0. The top one here is a USB 2.0 uh, type A connector. The middle one, the blue, is USB 3.0 type A connector. So what about the black one at the bottom? The black one at the bottom is also a USB 3.0 type A connector. So if it's blue colored, it's almost always USB um, 3.0, but if it's another color, it can be either one, USB 3 or 2. Now, if we look at the other connectors, the USB-B connectors, these are device connectors is what they're called often. The top one is a USB 2.0 connector and it has that white center. The bottom one with the blue is a USB 3.0 connector. Again, blue usually indicates USB 3.0, but you can tell on this one, it has a different size than the top connector. So it's easy to tell the difference. Now, because everything got shrunk down, we have smaller connectors. The top connector here is a USB 2.0B mini connector. The middle one is the USB 2.0B micro connector. You might have had that on an old cell phone or maybe you still have that cell phone working and it works fine and you're still using the USB B mini connector. And then the bottom one is the US or micro connector for the cell phones. Anyway, um, the bottom one is a USB-B micro connector for USB 3.0. So the bottom one, a little bit longer, is the micro connector for the USB 3.0. The USB-C connector is an oval shape and it is symmetrical, so it can be used either way. You can put it in right side up or upside down. There really is no upside down. You can put it in either way and that makes it such a wonderful connector. The other reason that it's going to be used much more in the future than it than any of the other connectors is that it has double the number of wires and double the number of pins, or more than double actually, that go through it, which means it can be capable of twice as many data lanes and twice the speed of the other connectors, even given the same protocols. So it's going to be used a lot more. Let's get into the naming schemes now, but first, could you please click that subscribe button? Also, put a like on this video if you like it and share it with other people. There's a lot of people that are confused about the USB 3.0 and other naming schemes, so please share this with other people and please comment below. I love to hear your comments and questions because it can give me ideas for other things to do or help other people that probably have the exact same question that you had. Let's get into the naming schemes. You can see here, I am looking at a table with just one entry, the USB 1.0 and 1.1. Yeah, I know we are gonna talk about USB 3.1, but let's do a little bit of history before we do that. So the USB 1.1 is the one that was really implemented first. USB 1.0 was just theoretical, and when they implemented it, they changed so much they put it USB 1.1. It was 1.5 megabits per second or 12 megabits per second. And in the 12 megabit per second flavor, it was called full speed USB. That was the marketing name, full speed USB. And originally they just had the USA, USB A and USB B cables, the original ones. And then later on when they did the USB 2.0, they had come up with the mini and the micro thing. So I put the plus on there, meaning they were added later. If you look at the USB 2.0, it went to 480 megabit per second, which in the day seemed extremely fast. Now it seems slow. Uh, high speed is the marketing name, spelt either way. I've seen it spelled both ways, and they have all the same connectors. And also now that you can have USB-C using a USB 2.0 connection. Now the USB-C I think can also be used with a USB 1 or 1.1. They're all backwards compatible, 
but I didn't put it there because generally you don't use a USB-C connector for a 1.1 type connection. If we go on to USB 3, that was much faster again, five gigabits per second. Remember, it takes a thousand megabytes to get to one gigabyte approximately. So 480, that's like half a, oops, gosh, I cut off a couple of things there. Okay, so 480, that is half a gigabyte. And so we went from about half a gigabyte to five gigabytes. So much, much greater speed. And it's called super speed now. And you got all the different connectors. So let's continue. Now I'm gonna need more space. So I'm gonna just keep the USB 3.0 line. So we got super speed and we're about to get a little bit faster. But first, let's go USB 3.1 Gen 1. It's the same as USB 3.0. It's essentially just a rename of USB 3.0. Yeah, I suppose if you got real technical, there's some little technical differences in the specs. Big deal. For consumer use, just say it's the same thing, okay? It's exactly the same thing. Now we're about to get faster. So what are they gonna do instead of super speed? Super duper speed? Super speed max? Uh, are they gonna call the comic convention and uh, go astounding speed or unfathomable speed. Or maybe they'll contact Mel Brooks and go ludicrous speed and have a plaid logo. Uh, well, anyway, let's take a look. <laughs> okay, USB 3.1 Gen 2, it's 10 gigabits per second, double the speed of USB 3.1 Gen 1 or USB 3.0, and it's called Super Speed Plus, 10 gigabit per second. Yeah, they didn't get real creative with the name. Super Speed Plus, indicates that it's faster than super speed. And then they actually list the actual speed on the spec and on the marketing material too. They actually say 10 gigabit per second. So that's kind of nice. It uses all the other connectors. Now notice that you can only get the 10 gigabit per second speed with a USB-C cable up to one meter. I don't think you can get it on the USB-A and B cables, but maybe you can. I haven't found enough information on that yet to really know the difference. But I know a USB-C, if you want the 10 gigabit per second, you're, you're limited to one meter cables or less. So you have to have really short cables. You might be thinking, oh, my phone has a short cable. Can it do 10 gigabit per second? Well, probably not. Most phones are made to top out at five gigabit per second on their port. And you know, you can't get any faster speed than the port is capable of. And in fact, both ports, the port on the computer and the port on the device have to be capable of that speed and the cable connecting them has to be capable of the speed. Don't forget that. So let's go on to, oh yeah, did you know that they have USB 3.2 now? Well, that's coming too. Let's talk about that. So USB 3.2 Gen 1 is the same as USB 3.1 Gen 1 and USB 3.0. Could they make it any more confusing? All right, so USB 3.2 Gen 1 is still five gigabit per second. But do you notice I added a little line here. I put it as single lane. Why did I put it as single lane? Well, because the USB 3.2 spec is capable of using dual lane. So that means two lines of USB at the same speed combined together to double the speed overall. You can only do that with a USB-C cable. The USB-C connector and cable have double the, more than double the pins or wires going through the cable. And so they're capable of um, using two independent USB connections and combining them together to make a higher speed. We don't do that here, it's still single lane. And if we go down, USB 3.2 Gen 2 is the same as USB 3.1 Gen 2, just a rename, 10 gigabit per second, single lane, all the same restrictions as the other one. Now, to avoid a little bit of confusion, occasionally you might see USB 3.2 Gen 2 times 1 to emphasize it's 3.2 Gen 2, but it's only using a single lane. And we'll see in a minute. So if you get USB 3.2 Gen 1 times 2, well, then we're taking this Gen 1 speed, five gigabit per second, and we're using two of those independently, combining them together so that we have double the speed, a dual lane up to 10 gigabit per second. Now, the advantage to that is that it is able to use a cable up to three meters, but notice it's only a USB-C cable because you need those extra pins and wires in the cable to make that connection at a dual link. So that's why you need the USB-C cable for this one. 
still super speed plus 10 gigabit per second. So I'm not sure that you could tell the difference in marketing material on that. You might look into the specs between these two because on the marketing material, they might be listed as the same. You might be looking at, look at what cable is required to be used. If it says USB-C only, it's probably a dual link. If it says, you know, any of these cables, um, then it's probably a single link cable or a single lane. So if we continue on with that same idea, we can go USB 3.2 Gen 2 times 2 and we get 20 gigabits per second. So you can see you take two of these single lane USB 3.2 Gen 2 lanes and you double them together or you put two of them together and combine them and you get 20 gigabits per second and it's labeled super speed plus 20 gigabit per second and you need a certified USB cable, but you, I'm not sure what a certified USB C cable is. Um, you just have to look at the marketing materials, make sure it's certified a USB C and it is ca listed as capable of 20 gigabit per second to make sure the cable is capable of it. Remember, you gotta also check that the port on the computer side and the port on the device side is also capable of that 20 gigabit per second speed to make sure that it works. There aren't a lot of devices that are capable of that kind of speed yet. Anyways, pretty much an NVMe type drive in an external case is kind of what you're looking at. Um, uh, there are other solutions, but that, that's pretty much most consumers will in, where they'll encounter it is something like that. And it's faster than most people will need right now. But that's, that's the beauty of these specs is that they, they try to future proof it. Looking to the future, the USB 4.0 spec is coming soon. It will have super speed plus 10 gigabit per second, 20 gigabit per second, and 40 gigabit per second capable connections, all using the USB-C cable. It will also, in some instances, be capable of running Thunderbolt 3 devices. That's written into the spec that it's optional to include support for Thunderbolt 3 devices. Thunderbolt 3 devices are capable up to 40 gigabit per second, just like the USB-C 4.0 uh, top speed. Uh, so it is optional from the manufacturer though. So if you buy a product sometime in late 2020, maybe early 2021, and it says it has a USB 4.0 port, check to see, is it capable of running Thunderbolt 3 devices or not? The manufacturer should tell you in the specifications if you're interested in using those types of devices. I hope you learned a little bit today on this home tech adventure and keep in mind, always have fun on your own home tech adventure and watch some of these other videos to continue learning.